dog group. We do believe that there is a link to criminality and specific dog groups. I've got a pit bull here. <laughs> He basically had her entire face in his jaws. There will be a variety of reasons why dog will bite man. Often it will be something that man has done. That's the address, an aerial view of it. A full system of surveillance is required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Hello, dog. Where's Talo? There, dog. The Kangal is in the garden. That's time, lovely. Okay, 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 okay. Lovely. Yes. Hello, mate. You can come too. You can come too. Come on, mate. There we are. Good dog. As well as anything else, you can see that this dog is desperately emaciated. It's got no ears. So whether that's been cut off to make it look harder, I don't know. But this is a very, very skinny dog. Purely and simply because it's not been fed enough. Or it's got a medical issue that they haven't treated. But over the years, we've heard lots of reports when we're going on raids of dogs that are trained to attack on a word of command. That's rarely the case, very, very rarely. Our own police dogs are trained in bite work, but they're not aggressive in the normal course of events. This dog, when we came down here, was absolutely fine towards us. It was growling and telling us to go away because we're invading its space, and we just gave it a bit of time, made friends with it, and the dog's good as gold with us now. And that's, what, that's our preferred option, and that's normally the case, more often than not. Come on, oh, please don't make me have to lift you up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. come, on. Right, come, on. come on. Sergeant Madden will learn later. His gut feeling about the Kangal is spot on. <coughs> In total, 13 dogs have been seized from this morning's raid. Oh, what a good dog you are, mind your nose. Not all are banned breeds. The SDU must decide which ones are. <coughs> Confiscated animals are held at police contracted kennels while their fate is decided. For the dogs that end up in these kennels because of welfare issues, it's the best thing that could happen to them. There's expert veterinary care, there's regular exercise, food and water, and they're probably given more attention than they've ever received in their lives. But for banned breeds like this pit bull terrier puppy, being here is the canine equivalent of death row. Identifying the dogs is complicated. Pit bulls are essentially mongrels, so there are no breed specifics. Almost half the dogs are suspected to be banned breeds, and that's part of the assessment today. But also, as, as the, a part of the assessment, we're looking at whether or not there are any welfare issues with the dogs. Unless there's a medical problem with the dog, there's no way a dog should be in a condition such as this at this age. Inspector Jan Ekers thinks one of the dogs is another banned breed, one rarely seen in this country, a doggo argentino. I suspect it's probably come in as a very small puppy, so it would have been difficult to tell what it was at that age. Uh, it's either come in from North America or it's come in from Europe, probably as a profit-making venture. Daniel Howard's Instagram post confirms the suspicion. <coughs> Seized dogs that can't be returned to their owners or rehomed are destroyed. <coughs> That's why the Dangerous Dogs Act is so controversial. <coughs> So occasionally she can have cat food, but not all the time. Carol Eden's world fell apart when she had her puppy Fudge taken away from her by officers from Merseyside Police. She says, without warning and without justification. I heard the banging on the door, and because I live on my own, I was a bit, what's that at this hour of the night? It was 10 o'clock at night. There was just lots of police cars outside. Policewoman said to me, we've got reason to believe you've got a pit bull, to which I actually went, pit bull, I've got a staffy. And she said, can we come in and see her? And I said, yeah, not a problem. She said, I just need you to sign this and then we can get out of your way. And I said, what is it? I need to go in and get my glasses. I wouldn't be able to read it. And she said, oh, it's fine. She said, it's just to say that you haven't been coerced by us in any way whatsoever. I took her out, uh, took her up to the van, she thought she was going for a walk. And two policemen got hold of her back end, pushed her in the back of the van, shut the doors and drove off. And that was the last you ever saw of her? That was the last I ever saw of her. An hour later, I got a phone call from the vets to say um, that your dog had been put down. I was devastated, honestly. Even now, the guilt is hard. It really is hard. Hard that she had a chance. I could have fought for her. 
I just hope that she wasn't too scared, that, that she wasn't in this strange building, getting a needle put in her leg, which is basically what they did, and then taking her last breath with strangers. I just think it was so cruel. Fudge was put to sleep five years ago. Since then, the DDA has been amended, but it's still breed-specific, and dogs are still being destroyed. Sergeant Madden has served 20 years as a police dog handler. I've seen him around dogs a lot. Sometimes he's firm, and I suppose he has to be, but mostly he's kind and affectionate. I want to know how he squares that with putting down seized dogs. I take no satisfaction in, in destroying any healthy animal, but often we will have no legal options available to us. But not all the dogs that, we, that come through us are suitable to be rehomed. Some because of what they have done, if they've bitten someone, and others because of the law. And many of them will be abandoned with us by their owners. Sergeant Madden's hunch about a cash the Kangle is right. He's very sick. Hey mate, you're not feeling very well, are you? The heart has an abnormal beat to it. He also has fluid on his chest and in his abdomen. With this sort of condition, unfortunately, I mean, he could collapse into unconsciousness and never wake up again. The SDU has joined Trident, a specialist med unit that tackles gang violence. Pit bulls became popular after a crackdown on knives and guns. There's less risk being caught with a dog, and it's also why they're known as weapon dogs or status dogs. One of the requirements for any registered band breed, almost all of which are pit bulls, is that the, the, the dog is insured, and they can get that insured through a couple of providers, and it has to, it has to be renewed each year. The dog here. The owner here has got a copy of their insurance, so all is good. Do you have an address that the people that were here moved to? The registered owner of this dog was murdered. Uh, the dog is still registered at this address, uh, and there is no insurance for the dog. It's the police! We're going to seize the dog, we'll take the dogs today, we'll speak to your brother in due course, and if he's got insurance, fine, you know, that, that's okay. Dogs, as you can see, are good as cold. They will go off at the kennels, we'll make some inquiries with the registered owner and see if he has got insurance, uh, and we'll take it from there. The SDU was set up in 2009. They're just as busy today. Dog attacks are rising, and that, that, that's borne out by facts and figures. Since the legislation change in May 2014, it was difficult to say what was happening because we were reporting more offences than ever before due to the private place um, amendment and extension. Having compared the figures for the first six months of last year and the first six months of this year, certainly in the Met we're seeing another 7% increase in seizures this year than we did last. There's a good reason Inspector O'Hara is so committed to removing potentially dangerous dogs from our streets. The whole side of her face had been opened up. It was just horrendous. Carla and her brother Luca were excited about Christmas. They were on their way home from a fair. Two unleashed pit bull terriers were walking towards them. I just heard the scream, I just heard the mum, and I obviously instantly turned around, instantly ran back. You know, the adrenaline just kicked in at that point. And as I turned back and ran the few steps back towards him, I, I basically, I saw Carla on the ground with a dog. I just did what a mum would do. I instinctively started yelling, screaming, and leapt on to them, onto the dog, onto them. And I basically had to prise the jaws of this dog off Carla's face. He was, um, he basically had 
her entire, she was four, so she was very little, had her entire face in his jaws. Dushka flagged down a car and asked the driver to rush her to a nearby hospital. I got home to her empty house, made a few calls, couldn't contact uh, Dushka, then I get a call. Uh, this is the Royal Free, your daughter's been attacked by a dog. Get here as quickly as you can. So I literally just leg it down the road as fast as I can, walked in, see Dushka first, and in bits, apologising. Obviously I had the motherly guilt of, I didn't look after our children yeah. well enough. I, mean, I let this happen. But that was the major <coughs> emotion that was going through me, was, yeah. oh my God, I can't believe I've done this. I can't believe this has happened to my daughter. Yeah. And actually, Why you know, Dushka saved Carla's life, essentially. Had the dog gone a little bit deeper here, kind of the jugular area? I mean, I mean it, it did, it definitely it cut the whole of this bottom yeah. part yeah. of her, so it's her severed, face. It severed all of the muscles across the bottom there, which isn't far away from jugular. It fractured her cheekbone, could have easily crushed her skull in his jaws. She had cuts all the way around her eye as well. I mean, it, it's... It's a miracle. It's a miracle Absolute she miracle. did not lose that eye. Unbelievable. And there was a lot of, um, a lot of references to life-changing injuries. Life-changing injuries. And I remember just grabbing one of the doctors and saying, what do you mean life-changing injuries? I just didn't want to hear it, I think. I didn't want to hear those words. Life-changing injuries. What an amazing girl. It was an yeah. unbelievably strong girl. You know, I, they took the bandages off. The nurses saw my face and they said, you need to sit down because it was horrendous. <sighs> horrendous. Yeah, she was The amazing. whole side of her face had been opened up. It was just horrendous. And, you know, they put it back on and at that point I was like, oh my God, she is so brave. The Cutlers credit the medical team on duty at the hospital that night and the following weeks and months for rebuilding Carla's face and her hopes for the future. We had the amazing, amazing look that the to I think the top plastic surgery consultant in the Royal Free happened to be on duty that day. He basically said, I've just come on call, I've just heard what's happened, I have a list of operations today as long as my arm, but Carla's going to be the first in. And I have extensive experience in nerve repair and facial reconstruction. That was an incredible stroke of luck. She's got a metal plate in her face. Now Where her well. cheekbone was fractured, so she had to have MRI scan mm. to just make sure the integrity of her skull was okay and whether they could go with that mm -hmm. and whether they needed, to, you know, how they would shape the metal plate. Mm. Mm. Um, and that was a long operation. Yeah. yeah. Five days, six days, we were able to come home with a lot of antibiotics, medication, you know. Bags of antibiotics. Yeah, bags and bags of medication. And we had to go back a few days later. The stitches didn't so stay many. in that long. There no. were so, 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 they so many hundreds of stitches. She's small, she's growing. Nerve repair takes up to two years. And even at that point, you know, after two years, we'll see where we are. You know, whether there will be further discussions at that point, we don't know. Barely coping with the trauma of the attack, the Cutlers were about to learn some confusing and heartbreaking news. The dog that attacked Carla was known to the police, was under investigation, had killed a cat and attacked the cat's owner only three months previous to this. And basically... A it was a confession. Of... It was a confession that a mistake had been made mm. and that the correct procedures hadn't been followed and therefore that dog should never have been on the street in December, on December the 4th when Carla was attacked. That dog should have been taken away from its owner and dealt with legally way before that. The police knew all this, this was all reported, and it wasn't. It wasn't followed up. It wasn't followed up. The breed of the dog wasn't checked. They took the owner's word that it was a staffy, and it wasn't. 
And that was incredibly, incredibly hard to hear. Why was that mistake made? Who made the mistake? What was, ultimately, Carla paid the price. The two officers who failed to seize the dog before it savaged Carla and the supervisor were investigated internally. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that there was a missed opportunity for an earlier intervention to get hold of that dog and take it off the streets and at least put it in a place where it was secure and safe to be. And that would have prevented the incident that happened to Carla. And that is, I have to say, most regrettable that that wasn't taken. What I can say is that the advice that was available to the officers at the time was not as strong as it could have been. The owner was sent to prison for two years. His dog was destroyed. The Dangerous Dogs Act was supposed to protect children like Carla. I wanted to know if Inspector O'Hara thought it had achieved its aim. It's difficult to measure whether it's been an effective piece of legislation because you can never measure the preventative effect that it has had. You will never know how many dogs there would have been on the streets of this particular type, for example, if the legislation hadn't been introduced. Um, but I think, by and large, it's, it is fit for purpose um, and it could be enhanced with a few small tweaks. In the end, I suppose Inspector O'Hara is right. We can't ever know how many lives have been saved or attacks prevented by the DDA. We would put to sleep probably around 300 dogs this year. Now, I have to sort of draw the inference here that they're not necessarily all healthy dogs or safe dogs to have around people, uh, far from it in fact. Um, what I can say is we have rehomed around 56 dogs this year so far. And we won't destroy a dog without some kind of a paper trail. So a disclaimer when the dog can't lawfully be rehomed, a court order that says it must be destroyed. But if a court rules that a dog is not a danger to public safety and the owner is a fit and proper person, then nine times out of ten that dog will go home. Daniel Howard has begun a six-month jail term after he pleaded guilty to 17 offences. Eight of his dogs have been destroyed. This one has been rehomed. Akash became a firm favourite with kennel staff, but never recovered and had to be put down. After more than 38 years' service, Sergeant Peter Madden has retired from the force for a civilian job. He's still working with dogs. There will be a variety of reasons why dog will bite man. Often it will be something that man has done. Dogs are man's best friend. I would question whether man is dog's best friend. The attack on Carla happened two years ago. Dushka and Tony have only spoken now in the hope that what happened then to their little girl will never happen to another child again. Lucas still crosses the road whenever he sees a dog, but the trauma of witnessing the attack on his little sister is fading. Carla continues to astound her parents and everybody else with her courage. One of her friends asked me the other day, you know, when's Carla Scar going to go? You know, just as a aside, and it's like, well, you know what, it's never going to go. You know, people are, you know, she'll be still, I'll always have a scar, but it will fade, and it will fade more and more and more and more. She's rebuilding her young life, smile by beautiful smile. <laughs>